Wheels Up, welcome to the Catalyst Podcast. We are uh, launching into the transformation series with Rachel Stander. I'm super excited to have her here. Uh, before I turn it over to her for introductions, uh, I did want to share that uh, this is another great connection uh, via Bob Seeger. And, and uh, you know, it's just been great to continue to build a, um, a similar network through LinkedIn and, and meet some great professionals and uh, just excited to jump into this conversation as we talk about transformation. I think that uh, what Rachel has going on professionally will fit well into this series and, and just excited to uh, jump into this discussion. Uh, I, I, I want to allow you, Rachel, to kind of introduce the, the scrap feature film and uh, certainly don't want to steal that thunder, but if you can just kind of open up with a little bit about uh, who you are and, and then we'll get rolling. Absolutely. Um, so thank you for that, Hunter. I'm like so happy to be here talking to you today. Um, yeah, I, you know, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm working on a feature film called Scrap. Um, and, you know, my road to that has been a little windy, uh, which sort of fits so wonderfully in, in this idea of transformation. Um, I, I guess I would say, you know, my 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 path as a creative professional started in middle school, high school. I, I was a dancer. I nice. started in dance. I, you know, I did like competition dance. Um, <laughs> how many times can you spin around before you fall out of it and do a <laughs> kick? Like it was like very much that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was, you know, it was like a great sort of way to meet people and, you um, it was, a, it was a good thing to keep me out of trouble after school. And, <laughs> and, and then it sort of grew into a more artistic pursuit in high school when I, um, you know, I started seeing dance companies that would be touring. I grew up in Seattle area. And so we would get like really wonderful companies from around the world. I remember um, the one that, that sort of felt like a lightning bolt was the Sydney Dance Company. I think that's what they're called, but for sure they're from Sydney. But it was, I mean, it was like nothing I'd ever seen. It was something between ballet and like Cirque du Soleil. Mm. And it was athletic and beautiful and artistic. And I, I was like, ooh, what, it, what is that? I want to head in that direction. Um, and so I started, you know, I learned about modern dance and I joined a, a youth dance company in Seattle and we worked with professional choreographers and I actually went to college for dance um, and loved it. And, you know, it was like, it was great. And then shifts were happening and I you know sometimes things whatever whatever's going on in you is shifting and like you have to come to a point of recognition where like the structure of your life is no longer in alignment with like whatever's going on internally mm -hmm. and you have to you know change the structure to to get back in alignment and so for me that was <laughs> transferring schools in the middle of my junior year, moving from New York City to Los Angeles um, and transitioning over into film and TV and, and acting. Um, and I was an actor then for a decade. Um, and, you know, in a lot of ways, it was very similar to, to dance in that it was about sort of like connection and expression and, and really about sort of like starting with the internal and like, how does it manifest mm -hmm. um, in relation to other people? Um, but of course, you know, there's words and, <laughs> and, and other people around when you're on set. So, you mm -hmm. know, also very different. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, you know, I started feeling like I wanted to have more agency, I guess, over yeah. what I was working on and mm -hmm. what I, what stories I was telling and, and what the contribution was that I was making. Um, and that put me on the path of producing. 
of being really thoughtful about, yeah, about the stories that I was telling mm -hmm. and what impact they were having. You know, I also, uh, I don't know, oh, this is terrible. I don't know his age. My, you know, I, I have a niece and nephew. <laughs> I think yeah. he's turning five this summer. Okay, that's a fun age. <laughs> Maybe four, four or five. I'm a terrible aunt, apparently. <laughs> um, but, you know, when they came around, I, it, you know, I, I really did start thinking of like, what is it going to be like for them in 10 years, 15 mm -hmm. years? What is their adolescence going to be like in the world that we have created for them mm -hmm. and the messages that we are filling their heads with? Mm -hmm. And I, in whatever small way, am participating in creating those messages. So how do I be more thoughtful about that and, and what effect it's going to have? Um, mm -hmm. So that is sort of <laughs> the winding road that brought me to producing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so I, you know, I've, I've produced several things, you know, short films and digital series and Scrap is the first feature film I'm producing. Okay. Um, it's also the, you know, it's, it's my first feature film. It's also um, the, the, the first sort of major project under the banner of my production company that I started called a season of rain nice. and you know I was <laughs> before we got on this call I was thinking about that and and this production company and and what does it really even mean to have a production company because each each project you form an LLC and sort of everything is contained within that project's LLC so business aspects are really sort of siloed out independent yeah yeah but the point of the production company is is again like to have consciousness around what you're doing to have a mandate for yourself about mm -hmm. what kind of work do you want you know if you if you're saying you want agency over your work okay mm -hmm. what are you going to do with that agency what is your focus going to be so for me i think that's that was a big part of of why i wanted to set it up as a company for myself so i could okay. say this is what i'm working on and and viewing opportunities through that lens and that's cool kind of a core yeah. focus yeah i think yeah. it's really it's like very important because otherwise you can get so overwhelmed with possibilities and opportunities and suggestions and like it's good it's good to have a little touchstone to go back to and say mm, does this is this really like what i'm what i'm here for <laughs> yeah yeah no i love that i, I can relate to that i started uh, e3 media co january 1 of 2020 and that was kind of a transitionary time for me um, from a career standpoint and, and really from a home standpoint to some extent. And, and uh, yeah, my, I, I try to keep it simple. I, I'm a big believer in the power of three. And so my mission with E3 Medico is um, enlighten, energize, and empower professionals. Mm -hmm. A lot of that roots from, you know, early career. And, and you know, I'm, I'm still, I guess you would call it like mid-career. And, and, and so, you know, I, I want to be able to kind of bring along and encourage people that uh, for the most part are, are probably behind me. I mean, I think a lot of things that come up in conversations here uh, are, are re relevant for various points of, of people's career and, and really offline, you want to, if you want to call it that and from like a personal standpoint, but, but the catalyst podcast for me is, is kind of that, that first project it's, you know, I don't know how long. I'll do this. I'm enjoying it, uh, creating a great network. Uh, it's not anything that, at least at this moment, that it's like, hey, this is my retirement plan, or, right, or anything <laughs> like that. Um, but I, I can totally relate, right? Because I, there are other things that I want to do. This was the most practical um, to, to start with. So mm -hmm. I, I can totally relate to that. I appreciate sharing that. I, you, yeah. you brought up agency, which is not something I've talked about much, but I love the concept. And I think that's a, a key word for professionals um, that really want to stand out and make a difference, whether it's you going off and, and doing your own thing or making a bigger impact within a team that you're on. Um, having agency, I mean, I, I don't know the exact um, dictionary definition, but I mean, to me, it's it's just having that that it factor and, and having kind of a, an edge about you that, um, you know, you're, you're going to have all those entrepreneurial type, um, 
characteristics and, and be able to endure and, and do something meaningful. Yeah. I mean, I think too, right. Like agency, you know, I, I brought that up in the context of, you know, me sort of branching out on my own and doing, doing this thing, but mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you can have agency. I think you can have a, you can have a sense of agency can like live inside of you, regardless of what, what is going on externally, regardless of what your circumstances are. If you can, I don't know, meditate or something. Right. <laughs> I, I don't meditate myself, but I imagine you could sort of, you know, you could, you could do that. That would be something you could come to through meditation is, you know, finding that sort of peace and sense of, um, to frame things as a choice mm. makes decisions feel better. Even, you know, I mean, like, even when there are things you don't want to do and it, it, no matter how much power control you have, there are still going to be things you have to do, right? You have to take out the trash. <laughs> you have right. to brush your teeth. Like nobody's doing that for you. So, you know, but yeah, it's, it's as much a mindset as a, an objective truth, right? Yeah, no, that, that's a great soundbite there. So I, I want to uh, just kind of continue to tell the story. I think you did a great job. I appreciate you kind of walking us through um, the transition with, with your education. And, um, you know, I think it's super interesting to, I, I think it takes a lot of awareness. Honestly, it sounds like, I mean, New York to East coast to West coast, that's, that's a big move. Um, can you just share a little bit about, um, maybe the, the, uh, decision tree or, or just how, how you were able to, land on making that decision and making that leap was it easy was you know what did it was it an overnight decision or, or was it something that was kind of a process <laughs> <laughs> i'm laughing because uh no it was it was not easy sure. <laughs> it did not come to me easily i um i mean you know sort of the catalyst back to you know what we're doing here the, mm -hmm. the catalyst of that for me when i i was in college in new york in manhattan uh and it was my second year of college when 9 11 happened mm. and um you know obviously terrible time for the country for mm. the city for um for lots of people. Um, <clears throat> and it was, I don't know, it really just sort of made me th think a lot about what am I doing? You know, if, if, if things were to end tomorrow, would I feel like I had done everything I feel called to do, or at least you know, attempted to do everything I feel called to do mm. with the time I have on earth in this body, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, ultimately I felt like, no, there's this thing that I've sort of been ignoring, but has been niggling away at the back of my brain for, I don't know, my whole life, who knows. Um, but I've, you know, I've ignored it. It wasn't practical. It wasn't, my mother didn't approve. My mother yeah. is not a fan of film or television and <laughs> thinks movies are a gigantic waste of time. <laughs> so God forbid I ever work in that field. But, you know, at some point you just like, I, I just didn't want to find myself in a position to regret the way I had spent my time or, you know, squandered opportunity the opportunity simply being like time on earth, if that's the opportunity, like mm -hmm. make the most of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was still, I mean, it was like a six to nine month process. Uh, you know, I, I started taking acting classes in New York. <laughs> it's like, nice. well, let me, let me see how this goes before I like uproot everything. <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, and it did not dissuade me. So yeah, so then, but then the next thing I realized was if I had stayed there, if I'd stayed in New York 
at the school I was at because I loved it. I loved the, the, the program I was in. I was really looking forward to writing my thesis. Like I was, I was very happy there. Mm -hmm. I knew if I stayed, I wouldn't take the leap. Mm -hmm. Um, so I sort of, uh, you know, forced myself, <laughs> forced myself off the edge of the cliff by moving across the country and, and, you know, to a, to a school where I knew nobody. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, in the middle of what was I then junior year. So I was coming in, in the middle of a program and like to the theater, the school of theater, um, which, <laughs> you know, theater kids are, uh, a tight knit bunch, I would say they okay. form, they form fast friendships and pretty close, close knit. So it's hard to come in from the outside right. when they're halfway through their sort of like, you know, four year journey. Um, but, you know, I found, I found my way in, I found my friends, I found, um, you know, a way to sort of make that program work for me and do what I needed it to do, which was like give me sort of the base to to explore and make sure i was like giving myself the chance i needed so that i wouldn't regret not having tried 